Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have a um, fish fillet with herbs and cherry tomatoes and lemon. We have a millet grain, followed with broccoli rabi and some beautiful, delicious um, strawberries with balsamic vinegar. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to work on is my strawberries. Here I have some beautiful strawberries that I've already quartered and cut up. And to this, I'm going to add a tablespoon or so of sugar. And I'm, and I'm going to let it marinate or uh, macerate for about, uh, for about an hour or so. So I'm just going to sprinkle about a tablespoon or so on top. You can add as much or as little as you'd like, depending on the sweetness of the strawberries. Uh, these are in season now, so they're really nice and sweet, and you can see the beautiful uh, ruby red color. So I'm going to toss these together here, and then what I'm going to do is just put them aside until serving time. At serving time, I will add a little bit of balsamic vinegar to it. Really simple, but really adds sort of a, a nice highlight to the meal, finishing up the meal with something refreshing and healthy beautiful, delicious fruit, which we don't eat enough of. I'm going to put these back here. The next thing I'm going to work on is the millet. Millet is a, is a grain, and it's sort of a, somewhat new to us, uh, to us, but it's actually an old grain. I'm going to get a saucepan here, and to this I'm going to add a tablespoon or so of oil. And I'm going to treat it almost as if I was making a risotto, uh, which is, so I'm going to add my tablespoon of oil in here. I'm going to heat that up. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon, uh, um, excuse me, I'm going to add a cup of millet. So I'm going to show you, it's really tiny. And oftentimes it's used as an ingredient in other things like, you know, breads and stuff. But um, you can actually use it as a substitute, substitute for rice. So wherever you use rice, you can use millet. It's pretty much cooked the same way. So I usually keep it um, sealed with one of these guys here. There's also uh, millet flour that you could use too. I'm not using this recipe, but I mean that's available. So this millet also comes in a... Um, in a flour form. And the interesting thing about this um, millet is that it's like, it's um, gluten free. So if you have a gluten intolerance or celiac disease, this should be something that you're probably already familiar with. Now here I have the, um, the water is boiling and what I'm going to do in this water is do the, I'm going to blanch the broccoli rabi. Most of you, you might know that broccoli rabi is sort of, not the most loved vegetable because it has sort of a bitter taste to it. And what I find is that by blanching it um, and then sauteing it, it really removes a lot of that bitterness. So they come like this if you've never seen one. They're in sort of like the, in the, uh, not really the broccoli, you would think they're in the broccoli uh, family, but they're not. So these have a sort of really strong flavor. And there's a lot of leaves on these. If you wanted to, you could remove some of the bigger leaves. But I keep them on because there's a lot of nutrients in these, uh, in these leaves. And then what I also do is take off some of the stem. So this water is boiling. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of salt to it. Not too much. And what I do, I also um, chop these up. And I already have some here already done. I'm going to add these here. Bring these back up to a boil. Ready. 
So here we have, this is boiling away here a little bit. So once it comes back to a boil, you want to let it cook for about a minute or so. In the meantime, I'm going to add my, my millet to the oil that's heating up here and stir that around. Just to sort of coat the uh, millet or the grain with a little bit of oil to toast it a little bit, gives it a little more flavor, and it prevents it from sticking a lot afterwards. So you'll get, um, it'll still, like any starch, gra starchy grain, it will sort of clump if it, when it's cold, but um, putting in some oil will sort of uh, diminish that, um, that characteristic of it. So there we go. So that's good. That's all you have to do. And if you wanted to add other ingredients to it, like mushrooms or meats or anything, now would be the time to do it. So to this, I'm going to add a cup of water and a cup of chicken stock or chicken broth. You could do all water or you could do all chicken stock. I like to use the chicken stock or chicken broth. And um, this is about a cup in here and dilute it a little bit. Because sometimes these, um, you know, uh, store-bought broths, they tend to have a little bit of salt in it, more so than I care for. So I like to sort of dilute it like that. And it also gives the broth a little, a fresher uh, flavor. So I'm just gonna stir this around, bring it to a boil, and then simmer it, just like you would do uh, rice. In the meantime, oh, I can smell this a little bit, the uh, broccoli rabi here, and they do have like a nice fresh smell. I like it, um, I'm, but I'm a vegetable eater, so. Um, so these are perfect. You don't want to cook them, you just want to blanch them, and that helps remove that bitterness. There we go. I'm going to move this off, and we're going to get a strainer. Just strain these out. I'm going to do it right here so I don't have to drag this over to the sink. Oops. Yeah, you don't want to do that. There we go. These are done, so I'm going to put them in the back and let them drain a little bit. So the next thing on the list is the fish. You know, this dinner, can, uh, this meal can actually come together in 30 minutes from start to finish. If you have some of the work already prepped, no time at all. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is flour the fish a little bit. Here's this beautiful um, paddock that I'm using. Let me get these out of the way here. And I'm just going to flour this with flour, and I'm going to season the flour with a little bit of salt. So here I got a piece of uh, plastic paper, piece of cellophane. I'm just going to put in a little bit of flour here. This makes for easy cleanup. A couple of tablespoons, pinch of salt. Mix it together. And um, I did rinse out the fish, but you don't have to. I think most of us home cooks do that, rinse out our, um, our fish, but you don't really, you don't ha have to. And you know, this is the, s the spring is the season for haddock, and this is a beautiful, really nice, fresh piece. You can tell by the nice white, nice, fresh uh, color. Somehow you can tell if it's fresh or not. Um, and, Freshness is so important in fish. So I'm, as you can see, I'm not putting very much on it, just a little bit. I'm going to line them up here and then put them on the plate to sit while I get the rest of the ingredients. So there we go. You do want to make sure that you have most all of it, you know, floured. You don't want too much, but you want each piece or each, you know, little um, part floured. There we go. And I'm going to put the fish here and let it sit for a minute.
So by uh, flouring it, you help it to um, brown when you're sauteing it. So I'm going to add a, a couple of tablespoons of o olive oil. So I'm going to add a uh, little bit of garlic to this. There. A strong. Um, big, huge clove here. Took a lot of power. I'm going to drop that in there. And that cooks for about a minute. And what we'll do to, once that cooks, we'll actually remove it. In the meantime, I'm going to need another piece for later of garlic, another garlic clove later. So I'm going to get this ready too. Ah, so I'm going to take a look at my millet and see how that's doing. Oh, good. It's boiling. It, so I'm going to give it one more little stir. I'm going to lower the heat to a simmer. There we go. So that's good. So that stays there. And so this here is doing its thing. So once the garlic browns a little bit, I'm going to remove it. In the meantime, I'm going to add some oil to the second pan where I'm going to do the tomatoes, that, the cherry tomatoes that go along with the fish. Add a little bit of oil to that as well. About a tablespoon. So you want to cook your, your garlic here just to enough to um, flavor the oil. So I'm going to add the uh, fish here. Remove this garlic. It's done its job, so now it can be removed. You could leave it in if you wanted to. To this um, oil here, I'm going to add my cherry tomatoes, which I've already washed. And they're in the container with the paper towel. So my, husband, my family sometimes will ask me, oh, is, you know, uh, which of these vegetables or fruits can we eat? And I'll say, well, if it has paper towels in it, then you can have it, because it's been washed. So I'm just going to add these in here, beautiful cherry tomatoes that we picked up at Calorizo's Farm Stand and Garden Center. They have beautiful stuff there now, especially with the growing season. Their plants are just amazing. I'm going to put in the garlic in there as well. And I'm also going to add uh, about a couple of tablespoons of um, capers. I'm going to drain them. Just add them in. There we go. That's done. I don't need this. I'm going to lower this heat. Comes the tricky part, remove it's turning this over. This fish is so fresh. By the way, I picked up this fish at Calorisa's farm stand as well. They have fish and all kinds of meat, but the fish is phenomenal. One last piece here to turn over. This is really beautiful, tender fish, and it smells nice and sweet. It's got a nice sweet taste to it, a smell to it. Um, so this has uh, been cooking for about a minute. Now I'm going to add about two tablespoons of white wine to it. I'm going to put up the heat a little bit as well because I want, it, I want that wine to kind of cook off. All right, well, the tomatoes are done. <laughs> add two tablespoons of wine. There's one there and one here. There we go. Let that evaporate for a little bit on a little higher heat. In the meantime, while this is, so that's all set. This is pretty much finished. We'll let it cook for about just one more minute. I'm going to chop up some uh, parsley. And 
And I'm also going to chop up some beautiful parsley. Uh, uh, that was the parsley, this is the basil. And I'm going to make little strips of just the um, skin of this lemon. These are going to be used as sort of garnish for the fish. So I'm going to take, I'm going to turn this around so you can see better. So I'm going to take these and just make little strips. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, makes the dish look pretty. Remember the first thing the first thing that we do when we eat is that we look at the food that we're eating. So presentation goes a long way. So this is done. Turn that off. I'm gonna get my plate. Oh, that's too big. This will do a better job. So the fish to buy this time of the year in the spring is haddock is in season, um, scallops are in season. They're actually the, it's, this is the time of the year that scallops are most abundant. And scrod or cod is in season as well. Okay, so these are done here. So you see how quickly this came together? So I'm just going to pour these over, just like so. So you've got your vegetables right in here. I might remove the garlic here too. If you're a garlic fan, you know, feel free to leave it in. You can um, slice it in th thin slices. You could use grape tomatoes as well. I'm just going to move this around and make it look really pretty. Actually, it's going to be like a red, white, and green sort of uh, pattern. And to the, with a little bit of yellow. So to this, I'm going to uh, sprinkle the parsley on. And then some basil. Tomatoes and basil, as you know, go perfectly together. You get really fancy if you'd like. And then to add just one more dimension of colors, I'm going to put these little strips of uh, lemon peel. So I just scatter them all around. And there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those colors. We'll see how the millet is doing. Boiling away, just like rice. One more thing that we have left, and that's the broccoli rabi. One more skillet. And one more tablespoon of olive oil. My trademark, I think, is olive oil. Very rarely do I use butter. And to that, we're going to add a clove of garlic. And this is a good time to maybe um, be a little bit more generous with the garlic. So I'm still going to use one clove, but what I'm going to do is uh, slice it in little smaller pieces so that it, the flavor really comes out. Actually smashing it works too. So I'm going to slice it. Okay. 
add it to the oil. Cook it for a few minutes. Not a few minutes, about a minute. You can, you'll tell, you'll be able to tell when it's ready, so when it starts sizzling. So this looks like it's ready. The broccoli rabi have been uh, pretty well drained. They've been sitting there draining during the time that we've been going ahead with the rest of the cooking. So I'm going to add this in here. This takes a couple of minutes to saute. I like to blanch them because, as I mentioned, it reduces some of the um, some of that bitterness. If you didn't blanch it and you um, and you stir, you know, and you um, sauteed it without blanching it, you'd have to use like an, a good amount of um, oil to sort of balance the bitterness from the from the broccoli rabi. So um, by blanching them, you don't have to use as much oil and you actually, uh, they cook quicker too. I'm going to add a little bit of um, salt to this. And a pinch of pepper. You could also use uh, red pepper flakes too if you liked the, uh, you know, the, that bite, that heat. If you wanted to intensify the heat. Um, what I like to do instead is to add some raisins to it, to them. And I find that the raisins really sweetens them up a little bit and you barely taste the, the uh, strong flavor. There's about a couple of tablespoons in there of raisins. It's not a bad idea to just fill them and see if they're done. Yeah, so these are beautifully um, cooked. You could also leave them whole. You don't have to chop them up the way I did. Sometimes I leave them whole, and then you just cut them up when you're eating them. So these are good, and I'm going to put them in the platter. So as you can see, these didn't take long at all. It was just a matter of blanching them and then um, just sauteing them for a couple of minutes, literally a couple of minutes. Oh, and as far as the health benefits of these, they are immeasurable. They're one of the healthiest food that you vegetables that you can have besides the fact that all vegetables are pretty are healthy in that they contain no fat other than what you add no salt lots of uh, vitamins and minerals so very good for you I'm a big advocate of fruits and vegetables Almost doesn't matter which fruit, fruits and vegetables you eat, so long as you eat them. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Beautiful green color. Look at that, that combination. And our millet seems ready. So you want to take it out and let it sit for about a minute or so. So this cooks for a good 20 minutes. Uh, just sim very similar to rice. I'm going to get the uh, bowl for the millet. So the millet has been resting for a couple of minutes, and see it? It's got those holes, just like when you steam rice. There we go. Beautiful. And I'm going to add, chop up a little bit of parsley and put that on. So 
So as I was saying earlier, if you wanted to, you could add meats to this, like chicken. Um, if you're adding fish, you might, you might want to add that at the very end. But things like chicken or vegetables like carrots, uh, mushrooms, you would add that in the beginning so that it would cook along with the, with the grain. So millet is a grain, gluten-free. It's a nice change to, you know, the rice and the pasta, uh, potato, starch. It is a starch. So here we have beautiful um, millet with some parsley on top. And back to our dessert, that's the strawberries. So this is really, these are going to be really nice and light, perfect for the summer months that hopefully are coming up soon. And so I've already added the sugar, those, this, and the sugar helps with uh, pulling out some of the liquid from the, um, from the strawberries so that when you add the uh, balsamic vinegar, you kind of get a nice syrup uh, uh, forming. Now when you get um, balsamic vinegar, um, this is the kind of type, this is the, the liquid type is what you would usually get for to make salad dressing. And you can certainly use this in, with, the, with the strawberries. You'd use about one or two tablespoons. Uh, I also found this particular brand uh, that has, that's a cream type of uh, balsamic vinegar. So I guess what they've done is just pretty much um, reduced it and cooked it, reduced it, so it's more like a syrup. So that's what I'm going to use. So if I were using the regular balsamic vinegar, I'd use a couple of tablespoons. With this, with the cream, I'm just going to sprinkle it on and just sort of eyeball it. It's just going to almost looks like, if you didn't know any better, it looks like a fudge, um, yeah, chocolate fudge. So I would say I'm doing about a couple of tablespoons here. You don't want to do too much, because remember, you can always add. You can't take away. And give this a toss. There they are. So I'm going to add one big strawberry here for decoration. So there we have it, another delicious meal that took no time at all, practically. We made this beautiful haddock with tomatoes um, with, and also uh, broccoli ravi with um, uh, raisins, some millet with just a sprinkling of um, parsley, and and some beautiful um, cut up strawberries with um, balsamic vinegar, actually balsamic vinegar cream. And I want to thank you for joining me today. And I also want to thank Calories' Farm Stand and uh, Garden Center for the beautiful food that they've uh, provided us with, including the fish. And um, uh, Winfrey's Fudge and Chocolate. We didn't use chocolate today, but thank you to them as well. And I'm Anna Trokakis, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.